markets now, South Africa's growing population of $71,000 millionaires will more than triple to $250,000 millionaires in the next five years. Wealth managers are seeking to position the industry to be able to provide value services to meet this discerning but also demanding new high net individual. The South African Luxury Wealth Summit was held in Santon with the aim to redefine Africa's notion of luxury. Items ranged from a $7,000 watch to a $1 million property to cater to the South Africa's 71,000 US dollar millionaires. The summit actually brings together the best brains, I suppose, of the luxury world. And be it from the financial sector, be it from design, be it from the luxury um, accommodation area of the world, there hasn't been a summit that has actually pulled people together and explained why. With wealth management as one of the key factors of the summit, private investment proves as a lucrative way to harness these pockets of wealth. In essence, Sunland Private Investments manages 61 billion rands worth of funds in South Africa, about 120 billion globally. And the, the essence of that is that we add value through a bespoke uh, a solution in terms of our clients, offering them the solution that fits them in terms of a South African operation or alternatively a global operation. So that's the way we do it. It's a bespoke, uh, a spoke, a bespoke offering and, uh, and, and that covers the, the entire spectrum of, of investments available in the market. While the rich and wealthy are considered to be people with demanding tastes, companies are developing innovative ways to provide value-added services. At PAM Golding Properties, our, our target market is, is the whole spectrum, it's the whole audience from, from low-end housing to, to high-end. Obviously, today we're focusing on the luxury and with regards specifically to the luxury market, we, uh, we cater nationwide. Uh, whether it be game farms, whether it be wine estates, whether it be hunting lodges or whether it be uh, some of the top end houses in Atlantic Seaboard in Cape Town or up here in Santon in Johannesburg. Th that is our market we, we, we aim to please. Although the targeted market is familiar with the finer things in life, they are not oblivious to those who need a helping hand. You have to say, well, people are spending money on certain things which they want to buy, which they want to have for a certain lifestyle. And on the other hand, people who have money, lots of them really want to spend money on things doing good. Emerging markets as well, we will say, well, I'm earning good money, but I want to give something back to the community as well. And that's where we try to engage as well and really make people uh, do something and uh, give them the opportunity to see both sides. Local suppliers and designers are also able to contribute to the growth of the African market. Okay. Now, what has the experience uh, been like, you know, with launching a homegrown luxury brand in South Africa? It's been fascinating. It's taken about three years to get to this point. It, it can be difficult, and I think that's why you see a lot of African manufacturers sort of keeping their production lines in-house. Um, but that's also great because you have the opportunity to sort of give people um, a chance to do hand-skilled work and, and really go back to the sort of idea of, um, of, of making things and job creation. With the number of millionaires being estimated to grow up to 250,000 over the next few years, it is not just about how this niche market makes their wealth, but also how they spend it.